Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from QBKing77.com here with the new Moto X, the 2014 variant, the one that they decided to call the exact same as the previous model. So the uh, Moto X, uh, I've been using it for a while now actually, I got it just one day before release date. Uh, so I've been using it since then, so it's been a while. So now I've got a lot of hands-on time. What's interesting is that it's going to be uh, very in competition with the future uh, Nexus 6. So it'll be interesting to see if some people like to go with the Moto X or Nexus 6. And it's also a competitor with other flagship devices. So let's take a look at it, and you can kind of uh, see how it stacks up to all these other devices. Alright, so here we go. Here's a closer look at the device. I did want to put it up against the first generation Moto X for those of you that wanted to see the difference. Uh, you'll see uh, it looks similar than the previous version on the front. Obviously there's a size difference. Flipping it on over on the back. Um, I did get the, of course with the Moto, Make, Moto Maker, it's a great feature. You can customize your own uh, Moto X. I just got black, just the standard. Um, and uh, I guess it feels very similar to the uh, standard Moto X previous as well. Just the back feels about the exact same. You'll see the dimples different. I prefer the more subtle dimple right here. Um, as the more you'll see, it's an indent. It's not uh, like a, a bubble or a bulge. It's definitely an indent. Uh, you'll see the camera's a little bit different look-wise, but yeah. So there's just a bit of a size difference. You'll see buttons are about the same. Uh, ports, etc., are all just about the exact same. So you'll see the screen is just about the only thing that's different. For those of you that want a screen size comparison, here you go. So you'll see, of course, the newer generation has a 5.2 inch screen. Uh, let's put this guy to the side and focus on this device. So turn this off. Let's talk about the design. Um, I am in love with this design, actually. I do really like the premium build and feel. You'll see it has an aluminum on the outsides. I noticed this in my unboxing video as well. Uh, that feels great in your hand. Uh, 5.2 inches is pretty much the perfect screen size for me, which obviously determines how big the device itself is going to be. So uh, it's great. It has been fantastic. It feels great. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, which I did mention in my unboxing video as well, um, hopefully you can see that, but the power button has ridges. So you can distinguish the power button from the volume rockers on the side here. That's another great feature that Motorola included. At, uh, it's clear which button is which. This is smooth. This obviously has ridges right here. I guess a couple things that I wish they had included with the design was an LED light. There's absolutely no LED light. It's interesting after using devices such as the LG G3 with an LED light, uh, it's interesting how you actually do use it when you have it. I didn't necessarily think it was needed, but I do technically glance over. However, they have combat that LED light with Moto Display, which I'll get, it, get to in just a bit. Actually, I take it back. Let's talk about it right now. So, without me moving, in the bottom right and bottom left of the phone, below the screen, it looks like through the camera you can see two little flashing lights. I Hopefully you can see that. Um, uh, they turn off when the active display goes. But anyways, there's two sensors down here that uh, kind of go off. They're not noticeable from the naked eye, so you don't really have to worry about that. But um, there are two sensors going off right now. It looks like you can see it through the camera. I don't know if it'll show up in the video or not. Hopefully it does. Anyways, so let's say, for example, it's sitting here. Um, it senses movement. So if I put my hand near the display, you'll see active display turns on. What act, uh, I'm sorry, not active display. They renamed it to Moto Display. It used to be called Active Display. Now it's called Moto Display. So forgive me for calling it that. So uh, anyways, like I said, you can just wave your hand over, and it's great. Um, I really like it just because, and it does occasionally turn on on its own. Uh, when you move the phone, when you take it out of your pocket as well, the Active Display pops on, and it works. It just works, and you don't have to worry about it uh, having to shake the device or anything like that for it to turn on. It senses it really well. So what, what you have the option to do is you can swipe down to unlock the phone. You'll see it unlocks it like so. Or if you have a notification such as an email or text, it'll give you a little preview of that specific notification, whether it's an email, text message, missed call, whatever. Hopefully throughout the uh, video I might get an email or something so then I can go ahead and uh, give a demonstration of that. All right, enough about active display. So let's go ahead and talk about, you'll see you have two, I guess, speakers right here. Unfortunately, it's not stereo sound. This is the only one that produces, I guess, speaker volume, such as uh, if you're on speakerphone or music or video, uh, video audio uh, right here. This is it. It does not play out of this top one. This is for only when you're on phone calls. So it's kind of unfortunate that they 
I guess, kind of, I thought they were going to go with the HTC route with dual uh, stereo sounds, but they didn't. Uh, but one thing to note is that even, um, I guess, comparing it to other devices with just the one speaker, it is uh, better than pretty much all of them. So they, the sound quality on this device is great. So if you listen to music out of your phone, the sound's not only going to come straight at you, it's going to sound good as well. All right, so that's it for the design and et cetera, moto display, all that good stuff. Let's turn on the screen. So of course, with this, um, you can open Google Now, you can unlock the device, or you can open the camera by pressing this button. There's also an option to enable widgets as well. So those are your options on your lock screen. Of course, this being stock Android, essentially uh, stock Android with a couple added features with, which I will get to in a second. Um, but essentially, you'll see you have the Google Now launcher letting me know Illinois plays Wisconsin this weekend, uh, some news, what to watch, weather, uh, things do, all that good stuff. So Google Now is right there within the launcher. There's a Google Now launcher. Now, as I said earlier, it does have a 5.2 inch display. It is a 1080p screen, so that's a step up from the previous variant. It also has 424 pixels per inch. And in my opinion, this is a fantastic screen. I have uh, had no issues with it. it Looks great, um, pretty much every picture, you'll see this background alone looks great. If I want to go to other backgrounds as well, let's go to wallpapers, um, trying them out. Just all the different colors popping out, um, you, you'll see it does a good job. I mean, I, honestly, it's comparable to any of the top high-end device screens out right now. Of course, it only being 1080, 1080 as opposed to, I guess, the Note 4 or LG G3 having 1440 displays, but regardless of that, I mean, colors look great. Um, everything looks true to color. Uh, one little thing I want to make a note of is the fact that um, I guess when I'm outside, it's not. I guess it's an, it's not a huge issue, but it could be better visibility when I'm outside. Um, I guess maybe if they made it a little brighter or something. I don't know. Maybe the glare on the glass. It's just. Um, it's not an issue, trust me, it's not It's not really that big of a deal. You can still see the screen, but um, on other devices I've had an easier time, I guess, looking at the screen in the sunlight than uh, this specific device. Anyways, you have a Snapdragon 801 processor running at 2.5 GHz. It's a quad-core processor. It's a great processor, don't get me wrong. Um, other flagship devices are shipping with an 805 quad-core. It does have 2 GB of RAM. Didn't seem like it really needs more, especially running a great uh, stock Android. Essentially, you don't need as much RAM as you would, whether it ran TouchWiz, etc., the overlay that Samsung uses on Android. Storage-wise, you do get 16 or 32 gigabytes. I got 16 gigs because a lot of my music, etc., is all in Google Play Music, so it's already uploaded, all that good stuff. Uh, it does not have a micro SD card slot, so thumbs down that one. It also includes a 2300 milliamp hour battery, which is kind of small, actually, if you think about it. Um, I guess here is me today. This is me uh, on my phone. Uh, I essentially didn't really charge it at all. Seven hours, 41 minutes. It's at 51%. Screen on is two hours. So there you have it. Uh, you'll see um, I have done a decent amount with my phone, checking email, all that good stuff, and uh, battery life has been good. I wouldn't say it is as good as maybe the, um, the Note 3 or Note 4 hopefully will be. The S5, 1M8, and LG G3 probably all have better battery life, but this is still good battery life. It, it's getting close to up as good as theirs, but it's not as good. I mean, it does have a 2300 milliamp hour battery on the back, which is not removable. Another thumbs down. So no uh, expandable storage and no removable battery. Could be a, a minus for some people. So, uh, but yeah, like I said, battery life's good. With Moto Display also, since it's an AMOLED display, uh, it only lights up these specific pixels. So you don't really have to worry about it truly draining battery life. Uh, you'll see, I, I mean, it lasts me just about all day, this phone. Maybe I'll get a quick charge here and there when I'm driving or something like that. But overall, battery life has been good. Now, as I said earlier in the video, this essentially runs stock Android. Um, it's not pure, purely stock Android, but it is uh, very close to it, as close as you're going to get without editing it a lot. So, uh, you'll see right now, Android Wear Connected, I am connected to my Moto 360, as you can see. So, that's just a notification right there. You can expand them with two fingers, you can swipe them away, you can't swipe persistent notifications away. Also, you have a panel right here with quick toggles, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, uh, mobile network, battery, etc. You can use two fingers and swipe down and it goes directly to them. Let's go ahead and go into settings. So, standard settings menu with display, sound, storage, apps, all that good stuff. I don't like to get into it with Android just because there's so many Android phones out there and this essentially runs stock Android. So you're getting all the basic settings, not the crazy ones. However, let's go to about phone real quick. 
Uh, as you can see, it's on 4.4.4, just about the latest, which is KitKat. Uh, one great thing, since this is essentially running um, the latest variant of Android, Motorola gets updates out very quickly. Um, it's fantastic. So uh, that's a huge plus for this device, is that you know once uh, Android 5.0 or whatever they're going to call it comes out, Android L, um, this is going to get the update soon after the Nexus 6 or the Nexus 5, all those Nexus devices. So uh, if you're looking for something with quick updates, this is a great option. Now also, if you, I don't know if you noticed, of course it does have on-screen buttons like so. However, when you have immersive mode, which came with KitKat, it'll actually um, go into full screen mode. So you'll see the status bar goes away and the on-screen button, so it utilizes that 5.2 inch screen while doing things. So you can swipe up from the bottom to bring both of them back and then you can go ahead and tap the back arrow home, etc. Now, like I said, it's not completely stock Android. Let's get into that. So essentially the, the two main uh, settings that you do have is Motorola Connect and Moto. Motorola Connect just allows you to connect your device to your computer, get calls and texts on your PC from your phone. So I haven't set that up yet, but it works well. I tried it on my old Moto X. It's great. Now, Let's go ahead and press Moto. Here's where the, I guess, the only changes Motorola has, really has done. So assist when sleeping, driving, when you're home and at meeting, it'll essentially do certain things. So driving, it'll you can have it talk to you. So it'll play text messages and tell you who's calling, play music. Uh, let's say, for example, when I'm sleeping, it's going to uh, keep my screen off. It's going to silence, uh, silence your phone. All that good stuff. So that's a nice feature. Um, if I'm driving, I'm not going to look at my phone at all. So uh, that's nice. If you are waiting for a text message from someone, you can hear it uh, play to you. Actions. React to motion. Wave to silence. Of course, you wave it and it silences the device. Twist to keep quick capture. So you go like this and it opens a camera. You'll see that work great. And it does work great. I've not had one issue with the camera being open on accident. And it responds to you doing it. Uh, you'll see. You can load this up. Tap and takes a picture, like so. Um, and it's essentially, it's close to the stock camera application, but it's not. I'll get to the camera in just a second. And finally, you have approach for Moto Display. Reach for your device to trigger Moto Display. So you can turn all those off. You don't need them. Um, of course, I love it. Active dis Moto Display is fantastic. Uh, voice, I listen and respond. So you, you set your own launch phrase. You can manage it. And you'll see what, essentially, it's just uh, Google Now where you can do it from anywhere. So if I said, okay, Google, what's the weather like? There you go. It's 57 so, uh, essentially what it does is you can set your hotkey. So I could have had it say, okay, Tim Schofield, here, it, uh, do this. So instead of, okay, Google, I could have it said, okay, Tim Schofield. Aha. See, it picked that up right there. And it's probably picking up what I'm saying right now. So I'm going to back out of it. <laughs> All right, let's go back into settings. So obviously, like I said, you can manage your launch phrase, which is nice. So you can customize that. Go back to display and uh, you can turn motor display on and off. And you can also customize which apps appear on Moto Display. Uh, vibrate on touch and that's about it. Um, as you can see this is essentially just about the only thing they've done to edit stock Android and also the camera application which I will get into right now. Alright so here it is camera application right here. Um, it's a little bit different so loading it on up uh, of course you do have a 13 megapixel on the back. It has a dual LED flash with a ring flash so um, it tries to make it better in dark situations when you use the flash. It does a pretty good job at handling it um, it's not fantastic, but it, it takes good pictures in the dark. Now, um, like I said, let's look at the application real quick. So you can swipe from the left and you have all your settings. So you can turn HDR mode on, flash, um, you can change control, focus, exposure. So drag the bracket um, if you want that on. So you can kind of do this and then it'll focus on wherever you drag it. Um, when you go swipe up and down, that's how you zoom in. So swiping up zooms in, swiping down zooms out. You can also drag this and to focus on a certain thing and tap on it to take a picture. That's just that specific setting. Otherwise, to take a uh, picture, all you have to do is just tap on the screen and it takes the picture. Uh, moving along, you do have video camera settings, uh, HD slow-mo and Ultra HD 4K. So um, I do have a test video using Ultra HD 4K if you want to check that out. Moving along, you can turn panorama mode on, location on, off, widescreen standard, uh, shutter sound on or off, and then finally the quick motion down here in the bottom left. So that's it. Not too many settings, not crazy settings like on the S5 or M8 where you have 
uh, all those editings and all that good stuff. And then you swipe from the right and it brings up your gallery. So here's the pictures that I just took. Um, here's other pictures that I took. We can go ahead and check those out. Um, so I can kind of give you an overview of what I think about the camera just in real world use, taking pictures of people, all that good stuff just for privacy. I'm not going to show you those. But uh, the camera is not as good as other flagship devices such as the S5, G3. Um, I would say it is good though. So um, it does take good pictures, solid pictures. The G3's camera is, is just superior to it same with the s5s um but this is i guess similar to the m8s i wouldn't say i would say it's pretty similar to the m8s i actually might say it's a little bit better than the m8s to be honest so uh yeah those are just some quick pictures that i took uh it, it, it works well honestly um it uh, it's easy shutter lag is basically none so tap on it takes a picture um i did get a little issue with the focusing so it's good that they included that option where you can move the uh that little bracket because um it sometimes doesn't know where to focus, I guess, so that's a little downside to it. And like I said, moving up and down is going to allow you to zoom in. Now, it running essentially stock Android, you know it's going to be fluid and quick. Uh, you have all your Google apps, Play Store, Gmail, all that good stuff. So uh, it's a fantastic option for those of you that love vanilla Android and also are thinking about getting a Nexus 6. So now in comparison to the Nexus 6, um, if the Nexus 6 is essentially supposed to have a bigger screen for sure, a 5.9 inch display, which is a good, a decent amount bigger, um, if you can handle that, it's supposed to have a little better display. It's supposed to hopefully, um, my guess is the same camera. Um, I guess, I don't know if it's going to have a removable battery or not, expandable storage, we'll see. And I also heard it might have uh, dual speakers. I don't know if that's going to be true or not. So we'll see if they can improve on that in the Nexus 6. If it does, I might give it the nod, but this 5.2 inch screen is going to be tough to beat just because of the size of it and it it's just an overall great display now just a couple gripes i wish they would include an ir blaster i have no idea why they've implemented that in the stock android where they can just uh essentially an ir blaster is what you can i guess control your tv with i really i use that a ton so i really wish they would uh have implemented that i actually need to have a, a phone with an ir blaster at, by my bedside so i can control the tv that's in my room so an IR blaster and wireless charging. I feel like uh, Qi wireless charging should be a standard for any Android phone. So I wish they'd include that as well. Just so you could set it on a charger and it would just charge for you. All right, but as I said, um, it is one of the best Android devices out there right now. Um, I know, I guess, spec-wise it doesn't stack up to some of the other flagship devices. However, it does run stock Android with additions to it by Motorola that are good. Um, looking at you Samsung uh, with all of those extra features that you don't necessarily need some of them are great that Samsung adds but some of them are just completely useless and just add to the bulk of the software all right that's it so like I said build quality second to none can't really beat it um, I wish it did have stereo speakers but uh, hey it still has good sound quality to it uh, the feel in your hand is just great the size is just perfect for me obviously it could it varies based on who you are and what size hand you have etc all that good stuff but um, overall one of the top Android phones right now very fluid very quick you have no issues playing games or running videos or anything like that so you don't have to worry about that uh, highly recommended by me actually, especially if you're looking to buy a Nexus device. If you can't handle that 5.9 inch display on the Nexus 6, I would say uh, this is definitely your device. I will do a comparison of the two though when the Nexus 6 comes out, so expect that soon. If you could subscribe to me, I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment uh, if you like the uh, Moto X, the new variant of the Moto X, Motorola. Either way, Motorola is a winner because they're uh, reportedly making the Nexus 6 as well, so we'll see if that comes true. And that's about it. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Subscribe to me. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All links will be in the description of the video below. As always, thanks for watching.